What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got this uh, this forces problem. Uh, so we're gonna basically try to solve it. So what we got here? So we got this kind of system uh, that you can see somewhere on the screen. I got a picture up, and it's got two adults and there's a child, and they're pushing on this block in different directions, and they're trying to make it go straight in in the x direction. So let's draw a force body diagram. Uh, force body diagrams are gonna be very useful for us in all of physics. So it's gonna be very good to know. Really. So force of one, right? Force one points in this direction. This is 100 newtons. And its angle is 60 degrees. Which is gonna be a very important piece of information. So force two goes this way. And this is 140 newtons, right? And its angle is 30 degrees. And we want the system to go just in this direction, right? So if we look at this system, let's think about what's probably gonna happen. I feel I'm like, it's gonna go upward, right? Because we're pushing more at this angle and this guy's kind of pushing down at an angle. So that means that we need to bring in the third force, which is the children, or the child. The child is gonna push directly this direction, right? And then this is a question about uh, how much are we trying to make him push so that it just goes straight in this direction. So when we're trying to solve a problem like this, uh, the most important thing we can do is we can basically divide our, our work into two parts. So we're gonna look at the force in the direction of y. So we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration. If we're trying to make this go just straight in this x direction, we want it to not accelerate at all, right? We want it to be zero acceleration. So if acceleration is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, and we're gonna get some forces in the y direction, is equal to zero. So what are some of the forces in the y direction? Well, let's look at this, right? So we have force one. Um, so force one, but force one isn't just acting in the y direction, right? It's a triangle. So if we're looking at this triangle, we're trying to find what its forces are in the y direction. So in the y direction, it would be this here, right? And we have a triangle, right? We make a triangle. So we know that this, uh, the hypotenuse, is 100 newtons, and we're trying to find just the force in the y direction, right? So then that means that this angle would be 30 degrees, and it would be cosine of 30, right? So if we're trying to find this, it's gonna be, because cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you multiply uh, the hypotenuse over, you're gonna get the hypotenuse times cosine of that angle is equal to the force one in the y direction. So let's do it for the blue triangle, right? So if we're trying to find this number, it's gonna be cosine of 30, but it's cosine of 100, or 90 degrees, plus that 30, it's gonna be 120. Because uh, if you have this 120, this is gonna be a negative number, right? And if we're looking in the y direction, this is acting downward. If you just put in 30, you'd be getting a different thing, right? That's not what you want. So the force there is cosine of 120. So the force of three is gonna be plus force three, and we can guess that this cosine is gonna be 180, right? Because we're taking this to be the positive direction. This is a whole 180 degrees around. Now cosine of 180 is just gonna be equal to negative one. And that makes sense, right? There's no angle, so it's just pushing straight down. And we know that all of this is equal to zero. So let's plug in what we know. We were trying to find force three, right? So let's move everything over to the other direction. So we're gonna get force of three. And then cosine of 180, like I said, is negative one. So it's gonna be negative force of three is equal to negative force one. So negative force one is 100 cosine of 30. And then this negative is gonna be over here, so it's gonna be minus force two, which is 140 cosine of 120. So basically, of course, you're just gonna multiply everything by negative one. And if you work that out, you're gonna get that force three is equal to 16.6 newtons. All right, so that's part A. So part B is asking, um, the acceleration of the cart, or, oh yeah, okay, so it gives us all that. Now it wants us to find the acceleration of the cart. Uh, actually, I guess it's not really part but you know what I'm saying. It wants us to find the acceleration of the cart, so let's do it. So we know that it's force three is that. So we can find the acceleration with the same kind of thing, but instead of using forces in the y direction, we're gonna use forces in the x direction. So we know that the sum of forces in the x direction is also equal to the mass acceleration in the x direction. So the sum of forces in the x direction equal to the mass of the cart, which is what we're trying to solve for, right? And then instead of acceleration, the x direction is two from the problem. So what are some of the forces in the x direction, right? Well, let's do the same thing. So it's gonna be force one and then 
cosine of this degree, but instead of looking at it from here, we're looking at it from here. So it's going to be, for the first one, it's going to be a positive 60, and then force 2, but then it's going to go to negative 30, right? Negative, or cosine of negative 30. But what you'll know is cosine of a negative number is the same as the cosine of the positive number. It'll be the same. Then if we're looking at force 3, it's that angle that is going to be at 90 degrees, right? It's pushing straight down, so cosine of 90. But cosine of 90 is equal to 0, right? So this is going to have no effect on the acceleration of the x-direction, which makes sense, right? If you're pushing on a door and it's not going to accelerate sideways, like that doesn't work like that. And then we know that this all is equal to the mass times 2. So then simply all we have to do is divide this sign by 2. So what we have is force 1 is 100 newtons times cosine of 60 plus force 2, 140 newtons times cosine of negative 30. Divide that by 2, and you're going to get that equal to mass. If you do that equation, you're going to get a number. That number is 85.6. 85.6 kilograms. That's how you solve this problem. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Good luck on your physics homework, guys. If you have any more problems, stick around for me, because uh, I make some problems like this all the time. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. And uh, thanks for the support, guys. See you in the next video.